In rugby union, the player at number 13 is known as the outside centre, or in New Zealand he is simply referred to as the centre. In this video, I'm going to be listing the greatest ever players at outside centre and ranking them from 1 to 10. First on our list at number 10 we have the Fijian Semi Radradra. Having moved to rugby union relatively late in his career after a tremendous career in league, Semi is the least accomplished player on our list in terms of records and longevity, but his performances in the number 13 jersey have been on par with some of the best there's been. Semi moved to Union in 2017 at age 25 to play a season with Toulon before moving to Bordeaux where he played for two seasons. He currently plays for the Bristol Bears since moving to the club in 2020. Semi was a winger in league but outside centre quickly became his favourite position in Union because he's such a great distributor of the ball that he can draw in multiple tacklers then offload to a teammate for an easy line break. He has the full package that you could want from a centre since he has great speed, stepping, fending, vision and passing and at 30 years old he likely has another few years of great performances left. Semi represented Fiji in the 2019 World Cup scoring two tries in four games and he will be hoping to make a big impact as one of the most exciting players heading into the 2023 World Cup. At number 9 we have Frank Bunce. Bunce first started playing international rugby in 1991 where he helped Samoa reach the quarterfinals of the World Cup. The following year he would switch his allegiance to New Zealand for whom he ended up playing 55 tests from 1992 to 1997, scoring 20 tries. He would get to play in his second World Cup in 1995, this time making it to the final with the All Blacks, but eventually losing to the Springboks. Bunce won the Tri-Nations twice and the Bledisloe Cup four times. He was well suited to a free-flowing running style of rugby played by the All Blacks and scored some marvellous individual tries and also split through defences to set up tries for his teammates. At number 8 we have Adam Ashley Cooper. Ashley Cooper has played in every position from 11 to 15 at international level, but his performances at outside centre throughout his career were enough for him to deserve a place on this list. He started 40 of his 121 tests for Australia at outside centre and scored a total of 39 tries. Ashley Cooper is the definition of an all-round solid player, with the ability to spot a line break, finish a try and beat defenders with a fend or dummy pass. He was also a reliable tackler with good defensive awareness and good under a high ball. He won the Rugby Championship in 2011 and 2015 and played in two World Cups, finishing as runner-up in 2015. He won the Super Rugby competition with the Waratahs in 2014 and played rugby for Bordeaux for two seasons after the 2015 World Cup before moving to Japan and finally the US. Had he played his entire career at outside centre, he would have to be considered to be ranked in the top five all time. At number seven, we have another Australian, Sterling Mortlock. Mortlock played 80 tests for Australia between 2000 and 2009 and captained the team from 2006. He's the fifth all-time leading scorer for the Wallabies with 489 points, which includes 29 tries, and he won the Tri-Nations twice in 2000 and 2001. Mortlock played in the 2003 World Cup, scoring four tries in five games, one of which coming against New Zealand in the semi-final, which was Australia's only try of the game in their victory over the All Blacks. Australia would go on to lose the final to England. Mortlock captained the Wallabies for the 2007 World Cup, but they got knocked out by England again, this time in the semi-finals. Mortlock was typically a direct runner when he got the ball, and due to his strength he could run over the top of defenders and break through tackles with ease. He was versatile enough to play in multiple backline positions, so he had the ability to link up with his teammates no matter where in the field he received the ball, and he also had a good all-round kicking game. Mortlock played club rugby with the Brumbies from 98 to 2010, racking up over 1,000 points for the club thanks to his role as goal kicker. He moved to the Rebels in 2011 and captained the team before retiring in 2012. At number 6 we have Yannick Josion. Josion played for the French national team from 2001 to 2011, making 73 appearances and scoring 20 tries. During this time, France won the Six Nations competition five times, including three Grand Slams. Josian played club rugby for Toulouse, where he made 300 appearances, winning three European Cups and three top 14 titles. And as far as trophy cabinets go, Josian has one of the most stacked cabinets among players in the Northern Hemisphere. He was an impressive athlete who stood at 6 foot 4 weighing 108 kilos and had multiple dimensions to his game since he could run the ball straight up the middle of a set defence or take the ball out wide and create some magic. Josian could play at both inside and outside centre and in 2007 he scored the try that broke New Zealand hearts, knocking them out of the quarterfinals of the World Cup. He was nominated for the World Player of the Year award in 2007 but lost out to Brian Habana. At number 5 we have Jack Furry. Furry played 74 tests for the Springboks scoring 32 tries and played a pivotal role on South Africa's World Cup winning team in 2007. Furry played in three World Cups in which he racked up a total of 9 tries 
which was more than any other centre on this list. In the second test of the 2009 series against the Lions, Fauri scored a try in the 74th minute to give South Africa the lead, which helped them to clinch the series victory. He broke through three tackles to get the ball down the corner, and it was recognised by the International Rugby Player Association as the try of the year for 2009. Fauri had a fantastic mix of strength and speed, which made him a threat to the opposition no matter what part of the field he received the ball in, with his long striding runs proving very difficult to stop. Fauri played Super Rugby with the Lions, then Stormers, from 2003 to 2011, before moving to play as Club Rugby in Japan. He played his final game in the Japanese League in 2017. At number 4 we have Jonathan Davies. Davies made his debut for Wales in 2009, and has made 94 appearances so far scoring 16 tries. He played on Lions Tours in 2013 and 2017, starting in all 6 possible test matches, and he was voted as the player of the series in 2017 by his Lions teammates. Davies had a formidable centre partnership with his Welsh teammate Jamie Roberts, and has won the Six Nations on 4 occasions including 2 Grand Slams. He plays club rugby for the Scarlets, a team he made his first appearance for in 2006, but he also spent two seasons playing for Clermont de Verne from 2014 to 2016, finishing as runner-up in the European Cup in 2015. Davies has an exceptional rugby brain, with an eye for exploiting gaps in the defensive line, making his powerful and penetrating runs very hard for the opposition to stop. He has great vision and decision making when it comes to picking the right support player to pass to, and he also has a monstrous fend-off when he needs to beat defenders by himself. Davies is a crunching tackler and one of the best backline players in the game for lining up big hits and timing them perfectly. At number 3 we have Tana Umaga. Umaga began his All Blacks career in 1997, playing as a winger and made 24 appearances on the wing position before moving to outside centre where he played 42 times. He played at inside centre 8 times and scored a total of 36 tries in 74 tests. Umaga was primarily a speedster who beat players by evading tackles and outpacing them, but in his first season playing in the 13 jersey, he won the award for the New Zealand Player of the Year, which shows he had brought more elements to his game and could now distribute the ball to set up tries as well as finish them. Umaga won the Tri Nations with All Blacks five times and captained the team in 2004 and 2005, playing his final test for the All Blacks against Scotland in 05. He played most of his club career at the Hurricanes and made his final appearance for them in 2007. At number two, we have Conrad Smith. Conrad Smith made his All Blacks debut in 2004 and he had a win percentage of just under 90% in the games he played for New Zealand throughout his career. He scored 26 tries in 94 tests and was an extremely consistent performer after he got over the injuries that hampered him early in his career. He played club rugby for the Hurricanes where he made 126 appearances, captaining the side for multiple seasons. Smith executed the basic skills of the game at a very high level and always looked composed when he had the ball in his hands. He was a master tackler and passer, and the lack of weaknesses in his game made him a great player to have on your team on both sides of the ball. Smith won the Rugby Championship 8 times and won the Rugby World Cup twice in 2011 and 2015, with the 2015 final being his last game for the All Blacks before retiring from international rugby. He went on to play for Pau in the French Top 14 for two seasons after the World Cup, and retired from rugby fully in 2018. In first place we have the Irish legend Brian O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll made his Ireland debut as a 20 year old in 1999 and holds the record for the most caps for Ireland with 133, as well as the most tries for Ireland with 46. In his first Six Nations campaign in 2000, O'Driscoll scored a hat-trick of tries against France in an inspiring performance to help Ireland win the game 27 points to 25. He was an influential part of the team that ended Ireland's 24-year wait for a championship when they won the Grand Slam in 2009, and he went on to win another Six Nations championship in his final season before retiring in 2014. O'Driscoll won the Six Nations Player of the Championship award three times in 06, 07 and 09 and is the all-time leading try scorer in the competition with 26 tries. He played on four Lions tours from 2001 to 2013, scoring one of his most famous tries against Australia in 2001, which turned out to be his only test try for the Lions. He was the captain for the 2005 tour to New Zealand, but he suffered a dislocated shoulder early in the first test due to foul play off the ball from two All Blacks players, which meant he could play no further part in the tour. O'Driscoll remained a one-club man for his entire career, which is rare for a player of his stature, and he is second in Leinster's all-time try scorers list with 61 tries, behind Shane Horgan 69. He won the European Cup three times and won the URC competition four times. O'Driscoll was on the smaller side for a rugby player at 5 foot 10, but his low centre of gravity proved to be a benefit for him during his career, as he could weave through would-be tacklers with elusive sidesteps and was also a deadly finisher once he got the ball close to the try line. He was an extremely reliable tackler and never shied away from putting big hits on players much larger than himself. 
O'Driscoll had an exceptionally wide array of skills as he could kick drop goals, throw audacious passes, find an outlet for an unpredictable offload, and spot an opportunity for an intercept better than anyone else. O'Driscoll was nominated for the World Player of the Year award in 2001, 2002 and 2009, but may feel hard done by for never winning the award, having missed out on winning to Richie McCaw by a single point in 09. Irrespective of this, he will always be remembered as one of the greats of the game and for many people, the greatest centre ever.